covered a lot of ground discussing our traditional watercolor brushes, the one inch flat and the number 12 round and variations thereof. I want to talk just a little bit about some special brushes. Uh, if we look at the, the realm of things, we could consider the one inch flat and the round brushes sort of our daily drivers in automotive uh, terms. Brushes that we're going to rely on constantly, uh, much like we all tend to have a uh, palette of colors that may be our core palette of colors. Mine are five or six different pigments that I go to quite often. And then we have on the side some uh, pigments that are a little different or that we may use for special purposes. Same sort of applies to brushes. Uh, daily drivers are great, but you know it's exciting to take my friend's Porsche out onto the Blue Ridge Parkway once in a while as a specialty vehicle when he gives me permission to do so. It's sort of the same thing applies to this. It's nice to shake up uh, our tradition of painting a, uh, a landscape with a different approach and sometimes substituting a specialty brush, a uh, specialty uh, vehicle I'll say, uh, with one of our standard one inch flats can be exciting and create a completely different mood or feeling. Uh, let me give you some examples. I've got several brushes here that I use on occasion to make uh, paintings and we'll start with with looking at this one inch uh, skipper brush which is sold here by Cheap Joe's and was designed by my teacher and uh, friend Skip Lawrence. It's an ox hair brush. Ox hair is a natural hair obviously and it tends to be a little stiff. Uh, this is a very dense brush. If you hold it on the side you can see that there's about a quarter inch of binding uh, fibers in there. So this brush does a couple things when you compare it to a one inch flat. It carries a lot of pigment and Skip specifically paints in a fashion sometimes. He also certainly paints traditional watercolors or uh, watercolors like the one over my right shoulder. But if you look at the watercolor over my left shoulder, that's a Skip Lawrence painting that was more than likely painted with a brush of this nature. So let's take some of this uh, alizarin crimson and fully load this one inch skipper brush. You can see the brush has a short stocky handle and in my uh, opinion it almost feels more like a sculpting or carving tool than a brush. So we've got a, a good loaded skipper brush and we'll see how much dense pigment this is able to put down on that paper in a short fashion. Just about completely saturated with pure alizarin crimson right there. Now, if you want to paint bold, rich watercolor, this is certainly something to give a try. We'll go in with a little yellow green here. can make very definitive geometric shapes with this brush. And one of the things that Skip encourages is the use of very dense watercolor pigment when you're experimenting with this technique, almost using watercolor like gouache or tempera paint. Still can pick up some loose color and washes here. But you see you immediately have a very different feeling when using a brush like this if you use it in the fashion that I'm demonstrating. And you can also see the intensity that you're able to get in a short period of time. So we've got almost a quarter sheet of ground covered with a one inch brush carrying a, a heavy load of pigment. Very similar brush is the uh, Magic Muslin which is also an ox hair brush. Slightly softer brush than the Skipper but you can see able to carry the same kind of punch that, that Skipper brush has. So 
A nice brush to maybe switch out with sometime and take a completely different approach. I would say uh, maybe a slightly more contemporary approach. If you certainly look at Skip's painting, it fits that category. Uh, but give it a try and play with, play with a brush similar to this and see what you think. One of the other brushes that people are intrigued by are these quill mops. And this is an Isabe uh, number 12 uh, black, Russian black squirrel quill mop. This brush carries a massive amount of water and pigment. See when I wet it, surprisingly it comes to a, can come to a pretty decent point. Uh, much like a round, but certainly you have some densely packed squirrel hair fibers. The other nice thing about this brush that I like, it has a lot of character. It's sort of made in the fashion of uh, traditional quill brushes, which were made from split goose quill and then bound with brass or copper wire. Uh, if you've never seen one of these before, it may look a little strange to you. Do not take the wires off the brush. Uh, they're an important part of the brush's foundation and keeping your uh, fibers connected to the, the shaft of the brush. Now, uh, a lot of folks like, this, like the looks of this brush and want to give it a try. It's not inexpensive, but not quite as costly as Kalinsky Sable. But they're a little miffed at how to use it in their best interest. Uh, let, me, let me show you the way I would typically, or I typically use a brush like this. A lot of times if I wanted to do, for example, an expressionistic landscape of my English garden and I want it to be uh, bordering on realism, but I want it to be very loose and energetic, I might choose this squill mop, and I've done this before, as my main driving brush to put down most of the painting. I can create shapes of an organic nature that flow into the background. Let's, uh, I'm going to use one of my reference florals of a foxglove and do a quick and dirty version of that for you. Foxglove is one of my favorite wildflowers that I enjoy painting. Foxglove have a mind of their own. As many of you know, they'll come up in the same place for three years, then completely disappear, and then reemerge somewhere else in your yard. Now, what I'm doing is I'm picking up a variety of watercolors, burnt sienna, Prussian blue, some uh, rose, rambling rose, and some yellow ochre. Now I need to make an actual foxglove flower blooming down here. This brush gives me the point to be able to actually almost draw on the paper. Those are a little too symmetrical, but they'll do for this demo. So back to my intent in using this type of brush. If I want a loose and expressionistic garden painting, floral painting, woodland scene, then this is a great brush. You can see how much pigment and water this brush will put down in one fell swoop, so to speak. And I'm not getting any of my bigger foxglove flowers in there, leaves. But you get the idea. Look at the stroke, the size of the stroke, almost two inches come out of one brush stroke with this quill mop. Allows the uh, color to run and mix on the paper. And at some point as this dries, I can come in with a scraping tool and define some stems and branches, background clutter, and then I can come in and highlight this foxglove with, with clear color uh, with a traditional round. We'll put a few in there just to give you an example of 
how I would form these shapes and leaves. Now this doesn't really capture the beauty of some of my previous foxglove paintings, but I think you get the idea that you can work, create a negative shape with the quill mop and then come in and and somebody might be able to pick this out as a foxglove somewhere. And as this, this dries, I would be able to uh, make a, a brush mark. through here to create some branches, texture, that kind of thing. The point being, this number 12 quill brush carries a massive amount of color and is great for mingling that color together in diffuse backgrounds. The other thing that's a lot of fun, as I showed you a little earlier with, with the round brush, is if I really want a nice, loose, organic quality, the ability to come in and texturize and splatter with this brush is unmatched. So I think a lot of the uh, challenge for folks sometimes is not exactly matching this brush to the mood and type of painting, which loose, energetic, free-flowing. If you want to loosen up with your painting, and people say that all the time, I can't imagine any better brush to choose. Uh, may feel a little challenging to you, but give it some time and you'll come around. One other brush I want to mention that I often can switch out as a daily driver and use this specialty brush is a Issa Bay Squirrel Hair 2 inch. And you see this one's rather weather worn. It's lost a lot of its enamel. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Not a big deal really in my opinion. Uh, the squirrel hair is very, very soft. And one of the ways that I use a brush like this is to create very delicate, bold washes where I want the color to mingle and precipitate, which is, refers to kind of the chemical reaction that uh, watercolor goes under as it mixes. This is a very soft hair. Squirrel hair is not a brush that lends itself as well to making a lot of geometric shapes and forms in a real definitive fashion, but it's wonderful for creating soft washes. And one of the things that I would mention to you when you use a soft squirrel hair brush like this, hold it perpendicular at the tip, perpendicular to the paper at the tip, and use very gentle pressure to lay down those washes. You don't need a lot of hard pressure on the brush. So it's a much more delicate process, and that's one thing that some folks have a little trouble getting used to. But you can see those wonderful gradations you can get of color using this squirrel hair. I'm just grabbing random colors in here. The squirrel hair brush, this Issa Bay squirrel hair, is also a great lifting tool when it's damp and a lot of the water is drained out. And this is the brush that's used by Ching Ki Chi to uh, create his beautiful saturated wet uh, goldfish florals where he actually lifts out the color back to almost completely white paper and then creates the positive shape out of that white negative shape of the fish and flowers. Like I demonstrated a little earlier, if you touch that damp brush down now and give it some time to work, you will notice how much of that pigment comes off of that paper. So it makes a great lifting tool. So the, the, the real virtues of this two inch specialty brush, in my opinion, are the ability to create beautiful soft washes and let the colors precipitate together with each other, blend and flow.